Oh, uh, it's uh, MTG next door. This is Stitch. Um, we got 11 packs left. I'm not gonna get to all of them, um, but I'm gonna try to go through as many as I can. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna hit the uh, I'm gonna hit the uncommons and the com uh, the uh, uncommons and the rares. Um, had a pretty good Oathbreaker game last night with the group. If you weren't there, um, it was pretty good because I was able to cast Torment of Hailfire for 27. It doesn't get better than that. So let's see. We'll flip over. We'll look for any dogs or cats. That's not be. It hasn't been proven. Proven uh, as. Um, let me get my glasses. I don't know why I start these videos thinking I could read the freaking cards with my own eyes because my own eyes are shitty and broken. So, and they're not getting any better as I age. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty good game last night. Doc had us over the rails. He did 25 damage to uh, to uh, the two of us uh, and then ran out of steam. And I had the funny feeling that um, Mr. A was about to pull the trigger on his um, uh, terrible, terrible Garrick machine. So I had to throw the Torment of Hellfire down. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got... Indulging Patrician, Flying Lifelink at the beginning of your end step. If you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses three life. I've already said, stated I really love this card. I love it at a 1-4 value. I love it as a Vampire Noble. We all know where that deck belong, uh, that card belongs. It will easily earn a spot there. Fierce Empath, uh, 2 and a green for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a future card with converted mana cost 6 or greater. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. I'm an elf. I hope you played me... Uh, uh, on your second or third turn, so that you can go get um, Crater Hoof Behemoth. Archfiend's Vessel, it's one black, it's one one, it's got lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, exile it. If you do, create a 5 5 black demon creature with flying. Uh, probably not good enough to make the same deck I was talking about here, but um, you know, not, not, not a bad thought. Oh, I got a foil here, so let's turn around. Let's go from the other end. Knight, wind card Scrag. Oh, Rare. Okay, uh, this is I think a third double rare, foil rare of the box. So uh, let's see what it is. That's not a rare. <laughs> That's solemn, solemn simulacrum. Uh, I guess it's a rare in modern or standard, but in EDH, that's what we like to call an auto include. So we all know what that does. I don't have to read solemn simulacrum. Uh, it's a 2-2 Baron, Tolarian Archmage. So that's interesting. I think I pulled this already. I can't remember. Let's read it. It's a 1 and 2 blue for a 2-2. Two -two. When Baron, Baron Tolarian Archmage enters the battlefield, return up to one other target creature, Planeswalker, to its owner's hand. At the beginning of your end step, if a permit was put in your hand from the, from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. Does, is this powerful enough to make Brago? That's the only question I have there. Do you, do you earn a spot in Brago? That's, what, that's the only thing, I, you know, when I see enters the battlefield, why do I keep putting the knife away? Put the knife over here. When I see enters the battlefield triggers on things uh, that are blue or white, my question always is, is this good enough for Brago? No foil in this pack. Let's see what the uncommons are. Leafkin Avenger, we've read this a few times. It's a two, a red, and a green for a four, three, elemental druid. Uh, and then you can tap it to add green for each creature you control with power four or greater. Or do seven and a red, and it deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. I find that, I disbelieve in that card. <laughs> That's not gonna be easy to pull off. Uh, Malefic Scythe. One in a black for an artifact equipment. It enters the battlefield with a soul counter on it. The equipped creature gets 1-1 one, one for each soul counter on Malefic Scythe. Whenever a equipped creature dies, put a soul counter on Malefic Scythe. Equip one. So this thing gets stronger every time the thing that's holding it dies. Okay. Traitor's Greed, three in red for a sorcery that says gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste at the end, at an, at the, until end of turn. And then add two mana of any one color. Okay? I guess that's just a, you know, a better steel creature card. Because you get mana out of it. 
uh, Thornwood Falls, and we have a Mythic. And looks like a green. Is there a Nissa in this? Nope, it's Garrick. Garrick Unleashed. So uh, I do believe this was the Garrick that uh, Scott played against us last night. Let's see. Uh, yeah, here it is at the emblem. You get an emblem with the, at the beginning of your end step. You may search your library for a creature card, put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. Uh, this is the second one of these I have. I think I opened one in another video, or I may have just not published it. Um, so I have a pre-release pack video. But anyway, uh, yeah, so when this enters the battlefield and you have doubling season out, it enters the battlefield with eight loyalty counters on it. And then you get the emblem. It is horrible. Shame on you. Shame. No cats or dogs. Oh, there you go. I had to, all I had to do was call the name of the cats and, and they show up. So we got one cat in the three packs here. What is that? Radiant Fountain? No, okay. Yeah. No foil. We're not playing the foil game in this pack. Wildwood Scourge, X and a green. Wildwood Scourge enters the battlefield with X 1-1 one, one counters. When one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put in... Put on another non-Hydra creature you control. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Wildwood Scourge. Uh, I think I've, I've got this in my draft pack. That's a draft card all the way to the bank, but Meteorite, everybody knows that. Reprint, Light of Promise, 2 and a 1, two and one white, Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature has whenever you gain life. Put that many 1-1 one, one counters on this creature. It's a long way to go for that card. Uh, I don't like Enchanting Creatures. They have huge targets on their faces, so... No, thank you. Windscarred Craig again, and we got a rare. It is a 3-1 Liliana Standard Bearer. It is a 3-1 for three. Flash, when Liliana Standard Bearer enters the battlefield, draw X cards where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Got. See if we can get a few more opened in under 10 minutes. Not likely with as much as I talk. There's opt. It's probably worth 50 cents. What is that? Three, six, nine. No foil. No foil, no dogs, no cats. Uh, Tavern Swindler, one in a black for a 2 2. It's a human rogue. Pay through, tap it, pay two, three life, flip a coin. If you win the flip, you, you gain six life. Uh, something about me loves that. I like coin flip cards. Threshing Bronodon, that's a reprint. Uh, just saw Trader's Greed, and what do we get? Oh, we got a Vasari Cat token. All right. I, okay, I'm not going to read it because I don't have the card yet. Uh, it's a rare. It is a Temple of Silence. Not bad. It's a couple bucks probably. Um... Yeah, I'll end up probably shipping off some of the temples. Uh, I, they've been around for a long time. I, I have tons of them. Um, I don't, oh, they don't, you know. I'm not a big fan of lands that enter the battlefield tapped. I don't care what they do. It's just setting me back another turn. I, I'm not, oh wait, we're, oh we might, yeah. I think there's a foil on this one. And there's another Tavern Swindler. We got the... Black Sanctum Shrine. Uh, the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life for X's number of shrines you control. It's coming, I'm just letting you know. This is, you know, it's coming. They're coming. For those of you who are driving right now and listening to this video, I just showed Urza and the Shrine. Griffin Airy, one in a white, enchantment at the beginning of your end step. If you gain three or more life this turn, create a 2-2 white griffin token with flying. Womp womp. There's your bird. There's your... You wish they could coordinate the tokens with the cards in the deck. I know they're randomized. I get it. But it's, it's just... A, what is this awful thing? Oh, it's a, Our foil is one of these foil shitty lands. Um... I'm keeping one of each, just so I could remember how freaking awful they looked. 
uh, rare. I don't expect to get any more transmogrify. I don't expect to get any more um, mythics in this box. We are at five mythics at this point. Um, five is a lot. Four is your going rate. So three and a red sorcery exile target creature. That creature's control reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. That player puts that card onto the battlefield, then shuffles the rest of their library. Uh, you know, this could be really spicy if you have, you know, Sensei's Divining Top out and you know that, you know, you know, you got your fatty sitting right there. Your big fat fatty. Your Fatimus Rex, we like to call him. Nobody says that. Okay, we're over 10. Oh, I'd like to get at least one or two more packs open. Let's go a little bit quicker here, quicker here, quicker here. There's a cat. Nope, 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 that's it. Okay. So we got Thrashing Brontodon for your uncommon. We've got Burl Fist Oak, two and two green. It's a two, three. Whenever you draw a card, Burl Fist Oak gets two, two until end of turn. Nothing's coming to mind. Unsubstantiate, one in a blue. Return target spell or creature to its own in his hand. I mean, that's a gr it's a kind of okay counter spell. Why is this in the uncommon slot? I do not know. I guess we got a foil in this pack. Uh, it is a foil land. It is a foil swamp. So there's two packs with two foil swamps in a row. That's weird. Uh, and the rare is an 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh. I have not seen this, I don't think. Pursued Whale, five and two blue for an eight eight. When Pursued Whale enters the battlefield, each opponent creates a one one red pirate creature token with this creature can't block. Creatures you control attack each and creatures you control attack each combat if able. Spells your opponents cast that target this whale cost three more to cast. Uh, don't hate it. It's just why am I giving out pirates? I guess because I'm a whale and I have a whole bunch of pirates. Maybe the whale collected pirates. We don't know. We don't know the whale. Maybe the whale ate a bunch of pirates. There's the dog. Maybe the whale ate a bunch of pirates. And when he comes to the battlefield, he's got an upset stomach. I should just stop talking. Three and two. Uh, so it's Avon Gagglemaster. Three and two white, four, three. Flying when Avon Gagglemaster... <coughs> <laughs> I said Gaggle Master too many, many times. It choked me up. And there's a battlefield. You gain two life for each creature you control. Flying. Havoc Jester. Four and a red. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, Havoc Jester deals one damage to any target. So it's a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five Devil for five. And it deals one damage out. And we got the Blue Sanctum. Our Shrine. The beginning of your pre-combat main phase. Draw X cards where X is the number of shrines you control. And then discard a card. Another foil. I guess they just stuck them all at the bottom. Uh, there's one of the... You know what? That's actually not bad. The red mountain with the fire coming up from the bottom and this artwork, that's not a bad land. I like that a lot. Uh, foil common. Ornery Diplosaur. And our rare is a 3-2... Caravec the Spiteful. Two and two black for a 3-2. Uh, legendary human warlock. Other creatures get minus one, minus one. Yeah, I mean, that, that you know, that could make an EDH deck just to fend off tokens, I guess. Let's do one more. I mean, might as well go straight to 15 minutes. Let's see if we can get it under 15 minutes. So we got one minute to go. Let's go here. Let's go. Oh, there's a dog. One minute to go, one minute to go, under 50 minutes to finish the video. Okay, here we go. Uh, Conclave Mentor, green and white for 2-2. Two, two. One if one or more 1-1 one, one counters will be put on a creature you control, that many plus 1-1 one, one, one counters are put on that creature instead. When Conclave Mentor dies, you gain life equal to its power. All right. Hellkite Punisher, 5 and 2 red for 6-6. Six, six. Flying Hellkite Punisher gets 1-0 oh, until end of turn, or just call it fire breathing, folks. Fungal Rebirth, it's a 2-1 instant return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If you cre if a creature died this turn, create two 1-1 one, one sapperling creature tokens. We got 20 seconds. There it is. Heroic of Intervention. We did it. That is one of my favorite EDH and uh, Oathbreaker cards. 
Love it, I'll read it. Uh, we got seven seconds. One in a green. Permanence you control, gain hexproof and indestructible until end of the turn. Bam, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a $10 bill. Don't care, it goes into my collection, love it. Um, all right, so that's what six or seven packs looks like. We got what, two dogs and two cats. That ain't, that ain't doing it. That ain't cutting it. All right, stay safe, wear a mask. It's a nightmare out there. A goddamn COVID.